In this video we're going to look at distance time graphs. Here's an example of a distance time graph. A distance time graph will have time along the horizontal axis and the distance from a set point along the vertical axis. So here we've got a journey. This journey shows something that is moving away from a starting point at a steady speed to begin with. Because as time increases so does the distance from the, set, uh, from the starting point and as it moves away in a straight diagonal line that means that it is at a steady speed. Then it's horizontal, that means it's stationary, that means that as time's increasing, the distance is remaining the same. Then, as time increases again, the distance increases, but this time it's at a steeper uh, steeper rate, or steep, this line, this section is steeper than this one, that means it's moving away at a faster rate, i.e. the speed is faster here than it is here. Then it goes horizontal again, that means it's stationary. And then it starts going back down. That means as time's increasing, the distance from the starting point is decreasing. That means it's turned around and it starts heading back towards the starting point. And whenever it reaches the, the horizontal axis, that means it's reached the starting point. So it's go back to where it began. Some key features of a distance time graph. If there's a horizontal section, like here and like here, it means that the object is stationary. It means it's not moving any further distance from the starting point. Another important fact to remember is that speed is distance divided by time. So if you take, for instance, this section, the distance travelled will be, if you consider from here to here, the distance travelled will be the rise, and the time taken will be the run. So the gradient of this section will be the speed. Again, or the gradient for this section. Likewise, this section, again, the gradient would be the speed because distance divided by time is the speed. And for this section, you just need to be careful because it's returning back to the starting point. If you were to do distance divided by, or if you were to do the gradient of this line, you're going to get a negative value. Um, if you take the, the, the sort of the, just the size of that, that would be the speed. Okay. Uh, what you're actually doing here is you're actually calculating the velocity. The gradient of it is actually the velocity for this section is the speed, for this section is the speed, for this section. If you were to work it out, you would get a negative value Okay, because you're calculating the velocity. But if you just consider the size of it, then that would be the speed. Okay, so here's a typical question, and it has drawn a distance time graph for you. So it says, a man left home at 10 a.m. to visit a friend. The travel graph represents part of the man's journey. So you've got distance from home, 0, 5, 10, 15, and so on, all the way up to 50 kilometers. I notice this in kilometers. And time along the horizontal axis, so 10 a.m., 12 noon, 2 p.m., 4 p.m., uh, 6 p.m., and 8 p.m. I'm actually just going to mark in the middle of them. So that would be 11. This section here would be 1 p.m. This section here, uh, that line there would be 3 p.m., 5 p.m., and 7 p.m., okay? So, we've got the journey. As you can see, he's moving f um, he's moving away from home to begin with. And then at a certain time, he um, it's actually going to be at half 12. He gets to 25 kilometers from home. He then rests, or stays stationary for a certain amount of time. So he rests, and then he cont continues moving away from home. Let's have a look at some questions. So... The first part says, the man travelled 25 kilometres and then stopped for lunch. At what time did he stop for lunch? So, at 25 kilometres, so as you can see, he travels for 25 kilometres and then stops for lunch. So this point here is whenever he stops for lunch. So that will be at half past 12 there, in between 12 and 1, so that's half past 12. So 12.30pm. It says, find the distance from home at 3pm. So you go to 3 p.m., get your ruler actually, so you get your ruler, go to 3 p.m., like so, and go all the way up to here, okay, and across, I'm just going a little bit too far with the marker, do some pencil please, okay, and you get that he's 40 kilometers from home, so he's 40 kilometers from home at 3 p.m., Okay, the next part of the question says, it says, he, he reached his friend's house at 4 p.m. He stayed for one hour, and then he returned home at a steady speed, and it took him three hours to complete the travel graph. So first of all, um, so first of all, he reached his uh, friend's home at 4 p.m. So at 4 p.m., he's there, and it says that he stays there for one hour. So that means from 4 p.m. until 5 p.m., so one hour, and did you notice that each one of these small boxes is half an hour, so it would be half four, 5 p.m., so that's going to be that section. So let's just draw that. So 
So he's going to be there for an hour. So he stays at his friend's house. So that means he's stationary. And then he returns home and it takes him three hours. So that's 5 p.m. there. And three hours then would be 8 p.m. So that's what time he's going to get home at. So then you get your ruler and you join those up. So you join up the 8 p.m. to there. And that's it. That's how we finish the travel, uh, the, the travel graph, the, uh, the distance time graph. Let's have a look at another question. Okay, so this question says, here's part of a travel graph of Shan's journey from her home or her house to the shops and back. So she's going from her home to the shops and then back again. It says distance in kilometers from Shan's home. It's got time along the horizontal axis and it's gone up in increments of five minutes, so five, 10, 15, and so on. Okay, the first part of the question says, it says, work out Shan's speed for the first 30 minutes of her journey. So, speed, and it says, give your answer in kilometers per hour. So, here we've got the time, and it takes 30 minutes, and uh, she gets, the shops are 20 kilometers from home. So we're going to use speed as distance over time, <clears throat> and because it's 20 uh, kilometers, it's distance, 20, divided by, now you need to be careful here with time. It takes 30 minutes, and 30 minutes is half an hour. And because it's kilometers per hour, we need to divide by 0 0.5. And when you do 20 divided by 0 0.5, well, uh, you just need to see how many halves go into 20. Well, 40 halves go into 20. So the answer would be 40 kilometers per hour. Another way to consider that is in half an hour, she goes 20 kilometers. So in a whole hour, she would go 40 kilometers. So that means her speed will also be 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, and finally, Sean spends 15 minutes at the shops. So 15 minutes, 5, 10, 15, yep. She then travels back to her home at 60 kilometers per hour. Complete the travel graph. So let's find the time it takes, because we know the distance. The distance is 20 kilometers, and we know the, um, the speed. So speed, distance, time. So we've got our triangle. And we're trying to find out the time. So time equals distance divided by speed. So time equals distance divided by speed. The distance is 20 kilometers. And the speed is 60 kilometers per hour. And whenever you simplify that, that's uh, 20 divided by 60. Let's simplify that fraction. That gives you two. That's equal to a third, a third of an hour. Now, if you work at a third of an hour, well, 60 minutes divided by a third is 20 minutes. So that means it takes her 20 minutes to get home. So that means that it takes her 20 minutes. So that means 5, 10, 15, 20. So she's going to get home by then. And then you should join that up. And we've completed our distance time graph.